Hello, my name is uh, Alberto Cremonesi, interventional cardiologist, uh, deeply involved uh, not only in coronary and structural disease, but uh, also in peripheral intervention. Uh, we are here uh, just to speak about what uh, happened uh, yesterday uh, during the Innovators Day 2015 uh, in order to highlight uh, something important uh, in uh, uh, peripheral vascular disease. I'm here with uh, two friends, uh, Farrell Lelig, interventional cardiologist, and uh, Young Fick, uh, in vascular surgeon. Yesterday we spoke about uh, many topics, very important topics. But I think that for the cardiological community uh, could be really nice uh, to highlight something uh, which uh, regard uh, uh, drug-coated balloon technology, one side, and what uh, we can do in a very complex lesion in terms of uh, SFA disease or end-stage critical limb ischemia. My first point uh, is uh, to Farrell. Uh, yesterday we uh, heard something important in terms of drug elution uh, for uh, SFA and below the knee treatment. The new things uh, is uh, that uh, Sirolimus is uh, the new drug instead of Paclitaxel. What do you think, Farrell? Well, thank you, Alberto. Uh, this is uh, interesting technology because I think it applies not only to peripheral vascular disease, but potentially to coronary disease as well. So it has potential broad application. Uh, drug eluting balloon technology is actually quite a well-established technology today um, and is quite widely used in both peripheral vascular disease and coronary disease. And the current drug that's used for drug eluting balloons is Paclitaxel. The reason for this is that um, Paclitaxel, it's been feasible to manufacture balloons which elute Paclitaxel, while uh, serolimus eluting balloons have been very difficult to manufacture. So what we see now is, for the first time, a balloon that has successfully managed to elute serolimus. And this is important because what we know from drug eluting stent trials is that uh, serolimus potentially has a greater safety because it's cytostatic and not cytotoxic and it has a much broader therapeutic window so it allows uh, much more freedom of dosage than paclitaxel with less potential toxicity. Having said that, uh, paclitaxel eluting balloons seem to perform differently to uh, drug eluting stents which elute paclitaxel but uh, there are these theoretical advantages of serolimus and it will be very interesting to see how serolimus pans out as a drug eluted from a balloon without the need for a scaffold in the form of a stent and uh, the way this uh, technology works is by um, having reservoirs which are attached to the balloon which then enter the tissues and elute serolimus. So I think it was of interest and uh, we will have to see what the trials show, but certainly I think it's an achievement in terms of technological advancement to create such a product. I really thank you for this uh, uh, overview and uh, mostly I think personally that uh, this kind of solution could help us uh, for peripheral intervention because we have seen uh, uh, that uh, uh, Paclitaxel uh, eluting balloons failed uh, in below the knee interventions. So probably something uh, is, com is coming up also for this kind of specific treatment. Yes, it will be very interesting to see how it works in that particular exactly. environment. Jan, we go to the vascular surgeon now and uh, we really uh, need to rely on your experience not only as a, a vascular surgeon uh, in the typical way, in the surgical way, but also in the endovascular way. Um, yesterday we heard something uh, uh, which is related to uh, one novelty, a uh, 
superficial femoral bypass, which uh, is going from the artery to the vein and then to the artery again, putting a, a long cover stand. What do you think about? First, we are speaking about a very complicated patient. This patient presented long femoroportal occlusion, and mostly this patient, in 50% of the cases, uh, presented critical limb ischemia. So, because they are critical limb ischemia patients, they have uh, high uh, comorbidity, and so we should push endo treatment for these patients. So, uh, we have different tools up to today, such as stent, cover stent, drug um, balloon, drug liquid stent. But the first step to treat this patient is to cross the lesion. And in some cases, we are not able to cross the lesion. Of course, uh, there is some other solution, such as pedal approach, to uh, have another attempt to cross the lesion, but in some times, we fail to cross the lesion. So, uh, presenting these uh, particular techniques to go from the artery to the vein and then to come back to the artery could, could help the physician, the interventionalist, to uh, propose to the patient another endovascular solution. Of course, it should be assessed, but it is a new concept and a new solution, very promising. We have heard that uh, uh, specific trials are coming uh, up for this uh, specific treatment. Uh, the second uh, question for you is, uh, we have seen that uh, in end-stage critical limb ischemia, where actually uh, we cannot visualize uh, any remained vessel distally, uh, there is uh, the uh, potential application of uh, uh, the arterialization of the uh, the vein, the distal veins. I mean, uh, if I remember in my uh, background, uh, this kind of solution was attempted by surgeons more or less 20 years ago. Yeah. Uh, now we have uh, something which is uh, reproposing us uh, this kind of solution endovascularly. Some comments, please. Still, uh, it's still a very high uh, comorbidity uh, people, and so uh, attempt with endovascular uh, solution should be assessed. I remember also of this previous study about uh, arterial fistula at the lower limb. I think it failed to, to show any promising results, so let's assess this uh, new technique just by endovascular route to, to treat and to try to revascularize these patients. Well, I think that uh, we really highlighted the, the most uh, promising technology for the future in the peripheral intervention. It is interesting to understand that uh, uh, today uh, uh, we have a really a, a vision of panvascular medicine also in uh, uh, the cardiological community means that uh, uh, we spoke about uh, stroke we are speaking about uh, any kind of treatment from aorta down uh, it is very interesting to understand that many cardiologists are really uh, focused on peripheral intervention i think that we need uh, a continuous collaboration in a very uh, multidisciplinary vision for the future and uh, i thank you all of you farah lelig and young fik for your opinion uh, during this interview thank you very much thank you thank you so much